work. Or if mom and dad has like a secretary, that's a my good thing. A yeah, my I, my husband always buys them for his secretary. So. All right. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to factor this thing. So, what does the denominator factor into? Five and one. Five and one. Which one's plus? Which one's minus? Uh, the five. The five is negative. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and we've got this. We're setting up our system. So three x plus five equals. I'd have to multiply this one by x plus one. So we get a x plus a. And we need to multiply this one by x minus 5. So plus bx minus 5b. All right, so what is my x equation? 3 equals what? A plus b. And then 5 equals what? A minus 5b. All right, what do you want, how do you want to do it from there? Get rid of b. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this one by oh, positive 5. So we get 15 equals 5a plus 5b. What's 5 plus 15? 20 equals 6a. All right, so we get 20 divided by 6 equals a. What does that reduce to? 10 over 3. Nobody, neither group got that 10 thirds. So I don't know who had it in here, but that was that popped up on both of them and neither group got it. Um, we need to get the A value or the B value now, right? So I'm going to plug into this one right here for the B. So 3 equals 10 thirds plus B. Shh, I'd probably turn this 3 into 9 thirds. So B is going to be negative one third. All right. So when I go to set this up, I know I've got to have X minus five and X plus one. Yes, Joaquin. To do negative one third. I, I took this equation right here and I subbed into it. Yeah, you've got nine. The nine over three. So I renamed three into nine thirds. So I had a common denominator. Yeah, nine thirds is the same as three. Oh, you're right. Okay. All right. So when I go and I sub my a in, instead of putting a in with the ten thirds there, couldn't I put it out front? Sure. Sure. And I'm gonna su switch it to two integrals. And then for the the one negative one third, I'll put the negative one third out front instead of putting it on top. Okay. So when we go to integrate this, we get ten thirds. What do I get for this piece here, for the 1 over x minus 5? Uh, natural log. Good. X minus five. Good. Uh, and then I have the minus 1 third, and for the 1 over x plus 1 I get? Natural log of x. Plus c. That's the final answer right there. Hey, I think I could do that one. You think you could do that one? What the, what the One more time, Gam. That, that five right there, that one? This? Yeah. It was because I used, I was trying to, trying to cancel out the Bs. So I chose that coefficient, so it was the same coefficient but with opposite signs. It's a system of equations. Wait, so what things are, we do, are on the test? Can you put that on the test? Are you okay, Gam? No. No? So I, what would I have to, in order to cancel what that B, what do I have to have in front of this what B? Else is there? Yeah, I'm distributing here, and then I that equation became this one, so I could subtract these bottom two. I just stacked my work. Okay. All right. There were three basic things on the test, right? Mahopi Tall's rule, right? Um, the partial fractions, and the what was the other one? The uh, improper integrals. All right, that one did pretty good. Okay, let's look at number 15. What did you say? Let's look at 15. Okay. 
I think I want to do 15 and want to do 10, and then you guys can pick from there, okay? Uh, go down to the bottom. All right, let's look at that one. So, if I was to put in the infinity, don't I end up with infinity over infinity? Which is indeterminate. So what do we need to do? La Hopital's rule. La Hopital's rule. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity. What's the derivative of the top? Plus 4. What's the derivative of the bottom? Negative 6x. Okay. All right. And then... We have to, can I, I, if I put infinity in again, wouldn't I get infinity over infinity? Yeah, so you do it again. Yeah, so I have to do it again. So La Hopital's rule is the limit as x approaches negative infinity. What's the derivative of the top? 14. 14. And what's the derivative of the bottom? Negative 6. Negative 6. Seven over three. So you end up with 7 over? Negative 7 over 3. Negative 7 over 3 is your limit. Oh, don't box it. Wait, that's like an answer. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh, I won't have to mark it wrong if you box it. How do you know when you go over twelve? Whenever you end up when you plug in the number and you get something indeterminate. So infinity over infinity is zero over zero. Um, in, a ne a infinity minus infinity. Infinity plus infinity. In, uh, infinity plus infinity I think works. I probably wouldn't put that on the test. Okay. Okay. All right. Then let's also do number 10. And I think that gives us one of each, and then you guys can pick from there. Okay? So, improper integrals. So, we're going to determine if it, if it converges, diverges, and if it converges, we need to evaluate it. So, um, where's the improper part of it? What am I going to substitute B in for? Infinity, good. So we're going to go from 2 to b of x to the negative 3 dx. And we've got the limit as b approaches infinity. When I integrate, what do I get when I integrate? x to the negative second over negative 2 from 2 to b. Are we all okay? I don't want to go too fast. All right, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm not going to sub in until I get that exponent moved downstairs. So 1 over negative 2x squared from 2 to b. All right, what are we going to do now? Um, plug in the b and the 2. Yeah, we're going to plug in the b and the 2. So the limit as b approaches infinity, 1 over negative 2b squared minus negative 1 over... What is 2 squared? Four. 4 times 2 is? 8. Double negative is going to go? Wait. Everybody all right? Oh, you just plugged in, right? I just plugged in. That's all I've done. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And then I had a negative from the subtract and a negative from in front of the 2, so that went positive. Uh, no, because it's it, the squared is on the x, not on the outside here. Okay? All right. I am going to put the infinity in. So I get negative 1 over 2 infinity squared plus 1 eighth. So I have 1 divided by a giant number. Zero. What does that become? Zero. Zero. So my final answer is 1 eighth. And so does it converge or diverge? Uh, diverge. Converge. Converge. So converge is a number? Converges if it goes to a number. Anything, if it goes to infinity, it diverges. All right. From there, you guys tell me what are ones that you want to see from this study guide. Which one? The one that I went to sleep on. Like, I didn't sleep on. Hey, can you put no trig in this test? No, there'll be some trig. You want me to do a trig? Let's do look at number eight. Number eight has trig in it. You get proof, and then you got easier. Just look at it's Ballard, do 14. Oh, the one with P? Okay. You may do 14? Yeah, 14 has trig in it. 14 has trig in it? Okay, let's look at 14. 
We aren't selling cookie dough. We're selling to see his candy. At least get the item right. God. Okay. Dang. All right. Um, so we're going to do some trig. Um, here's the problem. If I put in the pi over 2. So let's talk about pi over 2 is up here, isn't it? Yeah. So it is 0, 1. What is cosine of pi over 2? 0, right? But if I put the pi over 2 here, sine of 2 times pi over 2 is really sine of what? Pi. Pi. What's sine of pi? 0. So do you see how I got 0 over 0? That is indeterminate, so you need to do la hopi tall. Yes. Okay. And it's not going to tell you to use la hopi tall or partial fractions or um, improper integrals. You just have to know that. What? You're supposed to check for it every time. Yeah, you got to check for it. Okay. So we're taking a derivative. What's the derivative of cosine? Uh, sine. Negative, 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 negative sine. Good. What's the derivative of sine? Positive cosine. Cosine 2x and chain rule is going to do what? 1 half. 2 out in front. Okay. All right, now let's try plugging in the pi over 2. So we've got sine of pi over 2 over 2 cosine of 2 pi over 2. So what's sine of pi over 2? 1. So, and it's negative because the negative that's up there. This is really, this is going to cancel. So what's cosine of pi? Uh, negative 1. Negative 1. So what is my answer? 1 half. 1 half. All right, I think we should look at number eight. The two in front of, yes, that's correct. All right, are we ready? I'm waiting. What are we doing now? I was going to go back and do eight. Because it has trig in it. All right, there's one with trig in it. Um, so I would have to do an improper integral because if I look at this function at um, pi over 2, it's one that does something like where you've got an asymptote at pi over 2. Okay, So you do have to do an improper integral. I know we didn't do a ton of them, but it, it up, it's a period in this. So limit as b approaches pi over 2. You know that if it's going to have an integral in it, for the most part on the test, it's probably going to be improper this time. But be careful. Watch, because I may throw some old AB stuff on there, right? All right. Tangent of x, secant of x, dx. Typically, we see that the other way, right? Secant x, tangent x. What's wrong, Alexis? Why is it improper? Because if I was to put this in my calculator, and I put tangent x, secant x at pi over 2, it goes off to infinity. It's, it has a it has an asymptote. Okay, does that make sense? All right. So when we integrate secant x tangent x or tangent x secant x, what do we get? Secant x. Secant x. Good. So the limit as b approaches pi over two, we get secant x from zero to b. Wait, what when we integrate secant x tangent x, we get secant x because the derivative of secant is secant tangent. All right. Let's put in the let's substitute in. So we've got secant of b minus secant of 0. All right, what am I going to put in for the b? Uh, pi over 2. Pi over 2. So secant of pi over 2 minus secant of 0 is the reciprocal of cosine, isn't it? That would be 0 over 1, right? Which, well, no, it's 1, one over one, 1, which is 1. one. All right, here's the other issue. Remember the secant graph? Secant graph looks like this, doesn't it? Where do you think that asymptote is? <coughs> pi over 2, which means that this thing here, secant of pi over 2, just like tangent of pi over 2 is infinity. Okay, because I'm getting closer and closer and closer. I get as I get closer to pi over 2, I go to infinity. Okay? So if I, go, if I have infinity minus 1, that answer is infinity. So does it converge or diverge? It diverges. Uh, I don't know yet. I 
haven't written it, so I can't tell you. All right. Are there other ones out of there that you want me to do? Do another uh, no, the, with P improper. Oh, the one with the P? Yeah. There was one on the... Was there one on here? I think there was. I didn't do it with the P. It was... I think I want to say it was the first one of the, in this section. That one. Right? Isn't that the one with the P? So the one with the P, let's see, six, do I have it written anywhere? So we know it's the one with the P because I'm looking at a one over an X to an exponent, okay? What would the P value equal in this case? Um, I can't see. 19 over 12. 19 over 20. Why? Why? Because it's the exponent on the X. Okay. Okay. Because it's the exponent on the x. Okay. Is the p less than 1 or greater than 1? Less than 1. So if you went back and you looked up your information, it's 19 over 20, yes. Is there anyone to go on the test? Possibly. Isn't this one easy? Don't you want one of these on the test? Yes, yes. All right, so when it, if the P is less than 20, does it converge, or less than 1, does it converge or diverge? Does it converge? It, it, it diverges. Okay. Yes, Joaquin. The only thing I just don't get is, uh, so when it points to 1, is that less than or greater than? That's less than. That's the alligator one. Cause with the, one the alligator wants a bigger number, bro. Yeah, because the alligator has two fishes, and that one just has one. <laughs> Yeah, I heard the alligator, but I never... Alligators don't eat cookies. Yeah. Well, eight toddlers, right? Uh, <laughs> no, they don't. Just don't stand next to the water in the dark. In your All right, in Florida. Yeah, we're in Florida. <laughs> no! All right. Are we good? What happens if P is... Greater than one, then. What happens if P is greater than one? Then it converges, right? Okay. Is it ever equal? I think that equal was is divergent, if I remember right. Let's go back to there was that. Let's look at that lesson real quick. It was eight eight. Find 8A eight, eight really quick. Do you guys look in your notes real quick? Open up your notebooks. Okay. We opening up our notes, notebooks, guys? Let's see if it's in this one or the third one. Is that the one with the P? No. What? All right, right here. Shh, this is what we're looking at. Okay, everybody's listening. Okay, so there were two different situations. Okay, so when it went from one to infinity, which is that what we had on that one? Yeah. Yeah. So we are we on the top situation. So you should know this information for tomorrow. Okay. If p was greater than one, it converged to one over p minus one. Okay. If P is less than or equal to one, it diverges. It is in your notes. I don't know what page. It's in the third, it's in the very last set of notes we took. Okay? We wrote it down after we did the proofs. If it was from zero to one, if it's less than one, it converges. If it's greater than one, it diverges. You gotta be careful a little bit. Make sure you know which situation you're in. Cody's gonna get it apparently. Okay. Okay. Are we good now on peace? All right. I'm too small, bro. 
What else do we want to talk about, guys? Yeah. I'd make sure you know it for the test. Okay. All right. What else do we need to talk about? Are there any others you guys want to go over? Let's do a. And not the one where you separate it. What's that? It's too small to be playing football then. What's the one called where you separate it to A and B? To A and B? It's an improper integral? Yeah, let's not do that one. Let's not do that one. Oh, you just want the improper integral on one end or the other? You want the limits? You want the improper integral with limits or the Lahopital's rule? Not Lahopital. You want more improper integrals? Yes. Okay, let's try that one then. All right, so let's look at seven. You're listening. Okay. So, are we listening? All right. So on this one here, we know we have an improper integral because the bottom is infinity, right? So I have to write the limit as b approaches negative infinity, and I'm going to go from b to zero of e to the three x dx. We're going to integrate it just like we always would. Okay? So, what would I need to do to integrate that? A u sub, good. So, du equals 3dx, and I move it over. I've got du equals dx. All right, so when we sub in, really what's the only thing we're going to really need to do to sub in? Put a one-third in, one one in front. Put a one-third in front. Plot that in the front. Okay, the limit as b approaches negative infinity of one-third. When we integrate e to the x, what do we get? E to the x. E to the x from b to zero. And then we've got the limit as b approaches mm -hmm. negative infinity of one-third e to the zero, right? Oh. Minus one third e to the three b. All right, we're going to put our infinities in. E to the three b. Okay, watch what happens because something tricky is going to happen right here. What's e to the zero power? One. 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 So it's one third. And now I'm going to plug my infinity into the other one. So I get e to the three times negative infinity. Negative infinity is not happy upstairs. So you got to move it downstairs. So it's e to the negative 3 infinity. So here I've got a small number divided by a giant number, which makes it what? It makes it 0. So my answer is 1 third. Does it converge or diverge? Converges. OK. All right, what else do we need to talk about? Are there any others that you guys want to see? So we move the e down because the exponent. Because the exponent, yeah. Because no, no, no. there was a negative infinity. Do one where we have to do the Lahopital. Lahopital? Was it the last few? Yeah. What, the one with the, uh, this one was good. I liked that one. I liked 13. You guys, fourth period got it right. Fifth period got it wrong. Okay, so. Um, we're do we know that we can't just put a one in because shh, see watch what happens when we put a one in. So when I put a one in, e minus e is what? Zero. Zero. And natural log of one is zero. So it's indeterminate. So what do we have to use? Lahopital. So we've got the limit as x approaches one. What's the derivative of e to the x? E to the x. What's the derivative of e? Zero. Zero. It's a number. Okay, what's the derivative of the natural log of x? 1 over x. 1 over x, okay. So I'm going to try plugging in my 1 now. I've got e to the 1 over uh, 1 over 1, so what is the answer? E to the 1. E. Oh, just e. Just e. If you put it over 1 or e to the 1, I can't mark it wrong. Okay, do the 1 before the 12. Wait, can you do Okay. So I couldn't just take, plug my 1 in because I got something that was indeterminate, right? So then I took the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom individually. That's Lahopital's rule. 
So derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of e is 0. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. This is a number. Right? It's 2.718. It just looks like a variable. It's like pi. OK? And then the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. And then we plugged in the 1. OK? All right, we're looking at 12, the one with the trig in it. Yeah. OK. So I'm looking at this one, and I've got a 0 squared over 1 minus cosine of 0. What's cosine of 0? One. So what do I end up with over here? Zero over zero. So it's indeterminate. So that means I need to do Le Hopital's rule. So the limit as x approaches zero, what's the derivative of the top? Two x. Good. And the derivative of the bottom is? Positive sine. The derivative cosine's negative sine, so double negative goes positive. Oh, but the one goes away. I'm sorry, I did not take my derivative very well. All right, if I put 0 into this, I'd have 0 over sine of 0 is 0. So I, st I need to do Le Hopital again. Okay. What? Another one? What? Oh, the poster fell down? We'll fix it. All right, what's the derivative of 2x? 2. 2, it's a derivative of sine. Cosine x. Cosine x. We're going to put a 0 in, so 2 over cosine of 0. What's cosine of 0? So your answer is 2. Want me to do another Le Hopital that we haven't done yet? Yeah. Let's see what we've got left. That one? OK. So if I put 1 in, I would get 2 plus 1 minus 3, which is 0, right? 1 minus 1, which is 0. So I have to use the Hopital. If you put limit in 1 over 0, put 0 over 1, you got to do what? 0 over 1, it's the answer is 0. Yeah, but then you got to solve for it. You don't have to do the Hopital. The, the answer would be 0. You use direct substitution. OK? All right, what's the derivative of the top? 4x plus 1. Plus 1 over the derivative of the bottom is? One. So that should take care of our limit issue, right? Because so I, I put in a 1, I get 4 five. plus 1, which is 5. OK, do one with the limit, but you don't do Le Hopital. You want me to do one with the limit where I don't do Le Hopital's rule? Yeah. <laughs> Can't I just plug a 0 in? What's the cosine of 0? One. one. Yes, Alexis. I found uh, on one of the posters where they didn't do L'Hopital, but they did, um, they just like factored it out and cross out the. That's okay too. But L'Hopital is another way to get there, right? Okay. So could you could have factored this and crossed out the ones? That's how we did it last year, yeah. right? But L'Hopital works as well. L'Hopital is like when is the limit, right? Yes. Yeah. Only you only use L'Hopital on limits, yeah. yeah. All right, are there others that we want to talk about? Do the improper integral. Improper integrals? Let's see what we haven't done yet. Oh, it's the other way. Um, so do you want to do nine? Okay. All right, number nine, we have to do an improper integral. So we've got the limit as b approaches infinity from 0 to b of sine x dx. All right, when we integrate sine x, what do we get? Um, wait, you get negative, negative cosine x from 0 to b. So we've got the limit as b approaches infinity of negative cosine of b minus negative cosine of 0. So that's going to go positive. What's the cosine of zero? Wait a minute. Hold on. One. Okay. I am going to put the infinity into the b part, so cosine of infinity. What's the cosine of infinity? Zero, uh, right? Oh, infinity. So does it converge or diverge? Diverge. Diverges. All right, I think.
think we're pretty close to having them all done, right? What are we going to do? What are you can do what I can do whatever you want to go over. Yeah, I, you want to multiple choice. Your number one I can do multiple awesome. choice if you number want me one. to do that. Yeah. I'm not going to do number one. Oh, that's not the number test. one's not going to be on the test. I can do, do you want me to do one of these other ones? Yeah, number two. Like number two? Do do? Number one won't be on the test. I'm not going to make you do a system of three on the test. Yes. It's okay for homework, but not on the test. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, so on this one, we have to do a partial fraction, right? So we've got to separate it. What does it factor into? Four and two, right? So we've got x minus two, x minus four. Mm. All right. So I have one equals. I'm going to multiply this one by what? X minus four. Good. So I have a x minus four a. What am I going to multiply this one by? Good, so we get plus bx minus 2b. All right, and we've got 0x plus 1. All right, what is the, um, so what is my x equation? 0 equals a plus b. Plus b, good. And then my other equation is 1 equals what? Negative 4 minus 2. Or minus 2. Good, it's minus 2b. Okay, what do we want to eliminate, the a or the b? Let's get rid of the b. Okay, so I'm multiplying by 2, so I get 0 equals 2a plus 2b. I'm going to put my answer up here. So I'd have 1 plus 0 is 1. Negative 4a and 2a is what? Negative 2. So my a value is? Negative one half. Therefore, b is one half. So b is. I gotta put into there for b. So I've got zero b. equals negative one half plus b. So b is one half. One half. All right. So now I'm gonna go uh, back up here to my integration. So for the a part, I'm gonna put in one or put in negative one half, but I'm gonna pull it out front. X minus two. I'm gonna split it into two integrals. For the b, I'm supposed to put in a 1 half, so I'm going to pull that out front, 1 over x minus 4 dx. All right, so when I integrate the 1 over x minus 2, what do we get? Good. And when we integrate this piece, what do we get? 1 half natural log after the value of x minus 4 plus c. Plus c. Now, one of the groups in fifth period had interesting something interesting on their poster. Technically, I could just put the one half, or I could put the one half out in front as a coefficient, right? But this minus, remember when we have natural logs, subtraction turns into division. So you could have done this as long as you did it in the correct order. But do you see how this one was positive, so it stayed up top, but the negative one is the one that went downstairs? So both of these I would take as correct answers. It's multiple choice. You don't know what they'll do to you. Your two looks like greater than or equal to that. Sorry, this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was right. Do number three. Number three? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, number three, I'm going to do my partial fraction underneath. So, we've got 2x minus 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay, so what does that factor into? Uh, negative 6 and 1. Negative 6 and 1, are we no, sure? No, that's not it. It's like negative 3 and negative 1. Okay. So I would have to multiply this one by x minus 3 and this one by x minus 2. Yep. So 2x minus 1 equals ax minus 3a plus bx minus 2b. All right, what's your x equation? 2 equals a plus b. Good. And then negative 1 equals negative 3a minus 2b. Good. And then we got to get one of them by itself. Okay. So what are you going to do then? We're getting rid of the b for sure, so it's negative 2. When I multiply by 2? 
Yeah, positive. Two okay, so four equals two a plus two b. All right, so what are you gonna get for your answer here? Three equals negative a. So, so a is negative three. A is negative three. Good. I could plug back into that one for b. So b has to be five. Everybody okay with b being five? Yep, so we're going to plug back into the top. I'm going to go ahead and pull my coefficients out in front. So negative 3 for the a. I'm going to put it into two separate integrals. Plus, plus five, is out there. 5, 1, one over, over x minus 2. Good. Then you integrate it. You get negative 3 natural log absolute value x minus 2 plus 5 natural log absolute value x minus 3 plus c. Good. Could I do the same weird thing with the fraction again? Yeah. The one on the left was on the bottom, right? Yeah, you, but this one is different. You'd have to move those up as exponents first. So I probably wouldn't do that on this one. I wouldn't do it in the first place. Yeah. Unless I wouldn't do it unless I was forced to with the multiple choice. Mm -hmm. Is there one more we didn't do? I don't know. We didn't do one, but we purposely skipped that. Four. Can I do number four? And I'm going to check the answer. Like three. Three. You're going to do number four and try to check the answer? Yeah. You want to try it on your own first? Yeah, that's Okay. All right, why doesn't everybody try number four right now? Can you go back to number three? I'll go back to number three. If you don't have anything to do, try number four. Okay? I know we've only got a few minutes, but. Are we good with three? Okay, you guys are working on four. I'll do four at the same time, but I'm not going to say anything, okay? So you guys can work on it. Hopefully some of you are ahead of me. This one's weird. The integration is weird, isn't it? I got natural log of x plus minus 2. Uh, natural log of 2x plus minus 2. OK, everybody got to that point at least? Yeah. This first part integrates nice. It's absolute value of x, right? But look at this other part. You have to do a u substitution on it oh, you because it's got a coefficient in front, right? See that? And then, it, but isn't this 2 already in there? So when I go to substitute in u, that's where I made my mistake, actually, when I did the problem. When I go to substitute in, I've got negative 1 over u du. So when I integrate this piece, what do we get? Yeah, so minus the natural log of u, and instead of u, we're going to put in 2x plus 1 plus c. I had a coefficient in front of it that I shouldn't oh. have. Wait. So you, this one is tricky because of this piece here. Why can't you just yeah. integrate that natural log of 2x? 
because there's a co there's a number in front of your x. Whenever your number in front of your x, you can't you can't you have to do the u substitution. We technically always do the u substitution, but our dx it's usually it's usually one. Yes, Josue. Wait, so how do you do substitution? How did I know to do it? Because there's a coefficient in front of that x. Instead of normally, do we have a coefficient in front of the x? Look at these. No, it's one, right? So think about this. If I did a u substitution on this, d u equals d x, right? So I don't need the u substitution. We do it, but we just don't, you know, we don't have to write it down, okay? So you always want to make sure when you have that inner function, you watch, okay? All right, so I'll be seeing some of you at 230. Yeah. We can run through some of these. We can do some multiple choice. Okay. Hopefully I'll see some of you at 5 o'clock. Nobody's here by 5.15, though. I'm going home. Oh, I'll be here by 5 o'clock. Okay. And you're going to sell some C's candy.